How small can you make machinery? Okay, that's the subject. And the, because I've heard people around in the bath saying, tiny machines. What is he talking about, tiny machines? And I say to him, you know, very small machines, and it doesn't work. I am talking about <laughs> very small machines, okay? Now, but before I start on machines, I'd like to talk about very small writing first. Okay, how small can we make writing? Or say, numbers. How big does a number have to be? If you want to write numbers down, what's the smallest you could possibly make them? I don't mean how high, if you're very delicate with your finger, how small you can make them, but with special machinery and so on, what is the ultimate limit? Well, the ultimate limit is that you can make a number. Of course, the number is just as good if you write it bigger or smaller. You say any size, any size. But you can't make it smaller than atoms. You can't write on an atom. You can't mark the atom number one. Because marks, you see, are just more atoms spread over other atoms, black atoms on top of white ones or whatever. So the way that you have to do to write something would be, let's say, to have a little patch of gold followed by a little patch of silver by another silver by a gold and so on, and some sort of code like dots and dashes to represent numbers. And uh, you could say that the smallest we could go would be, say, perhaps 100 atoms probably can go down to one atom, but if you want to make it nice, a hundred atoms on a side. And I'd like to talk about how small that really is, because you don't quite appreciate how much you could write if you could write that way. So I start out further back and talk about uh, uh, things that have done in the past. People have pointed out to me that the Lord's Prayer has been written on the head of a pin. All right, now let's see what we would have to do if we wanted to write the entire Encyclopedia Britannica on the head of a pin, can we do that? Well, first of all, the Encyclopedia Britannica has something 20, 30, some odd thousand pages. And you imagine that each page is on a special piece of paper and you put them all over the ground and you get a great big area, you know, 20,000 square feet. And that has to be shrunk down to the size of a head of a pin. And after a little figuring, you'll figure it out yourself. It's about 20,000 times reduced. So if we could reduce the size of the words, the letters, the dots in the pictures, the whole thing, everything that's in the encyclopedia, only by 20,000 times this way, and of course this way too. So it's 40 million times difference in area. There's a lot of difference in area between the head of a pin and 20,000 square feet. Uh, then we could write the entire encyclopedia on the head of a pin. And as I will indicate soon, that's not too difficult. Mm. To give you some idea of the scale in which that, to which that corresponds, an entire library, like the Caltech Scientific Library, can all be put on one library card. We could send all the information that's in the library on one library card, say to Brazil, if the library and scientific library in Brazil burns down out, then we just send them a one library card which contains all the information in all the books in the Caltech library. The Congressional Library of Washington is larger and requires something like Time magazine to tell all that information at the scale. And so we see that if we could go down to 20,000 times smaller, and I'll show, tell you in a moment right away that that's nowhere near limits of atoms are not coming in at all at that scale. There's no problem in going 20,000 times, and that's the kind of scale that, that would be possible. So, just a moment while I look at my notes. If uh, we made it in the three-dimensional manner, you see, the, all that I've done so far is writing on the flat of the pin. I haven't used the guts of the head of the pin. The Encyclopedia Britannica actually uses a volume. It has page after page. If we could write deeper, you see, not just on the surface of the pin, but in the interior, we could ask ourselves, let's do it with our the atoms. That's much further reduced to get five atoms on a side, little cubes, that's 100 atoms, of gold and silver and so on. And now I'm not doing the pictures, but I'm just putting all the words in some call of code, like Morse code, with dots and dashes, gold and silver. How much could we put into what space? All right, now it turns out if you take all the books in all the libraries, Turkish, Hungarian, everything, all over the entire world, 
and just take the information because I can't get the pictures at this scale. Then all this goes into a volume of material, one two hundredth of an inch on a side, which is the smallest piece of dust that you can possibly see. That's the net result of all mankind's arrangement of information. But all that information could be remembered in a piece of dust that size. And that gives us some idea about the fact that there's plenty of room to make things very much smaller than we ever made them before. Our books are obviously too big. What's the sense of having all that stuff in this big library when you can put it all in one card? Oh, it's convenient to have the books in your hand. But for some kind of a summary of all the information and to transmit the sub information from one place to the other or send it. Or suppose that you're afraid that all of civilization is going to collapse and you would like to leave copies of the libraries because you say everything in the Alexandria library was in one library and that got smoked out and that was the end of that knowledge. It would be died. Good. Hurry up. We should make copies. Okay. So we have all this dust. You see little pieces of dust that have all have copies of it all over and they can't get rid of all the dust you see. Fellas. Anyway, that's what it amounts to. Now you might ask, if we had something that small, my, the five atoms on a side is a little, well, you could still read that. Yeah, but let's go back to the 20,000 times reduced encyclopedia, which isn't as small as you can get, but pretty dramatic and good enough, right? How can you read it? Well, if you try the ordinary microscope to look at it, you can't see, you can't magnify more than 2,000 times because light has a structure and you can't see any closer than the structure called the wavelength of light. But you can use electron microscopes, which don't stop at 2,000, go up to 200,000. Well, we only need 20,000. It's only 10 times better than light. It's rather easy, actually, to see 20,000 times uh, reduced pictures with an electron microscope. It would be very easy to read this book that we wrote on the head of the